Good morning. Welcome to Sendaria Baptist Church Online. I'm glad you joined us this Sunday morning, and we want to spend some time together in God's Word. My name is Bob McSpadden. I'm pastor at Sendaria Baptist Church here in Tucson, Arizona. We live in a time that's kind of tense, a little bit uptight right now. Uh, some people are full of fear, some people even panicking because of the coronavirus. I'm not going to talk about the coronavirus so much today because you hear about that every time you turn on the TV. But instead, I want to talk about God's Word, a message that I've entitled, Burdens, What Are You Going to Do With Them? So we live in a fast-paced kind of society, or at least we did live that way. Have you ever wondered if God, by confining us to our homes right now and having to stay within the, those four walls, that maybe God is forcing us just to kind of slow down for a little bit? that maybe he's putting us in a place where we have to pay attention to some of the more important things in life. I want to share a story with you. It appeared in the Tahoma, Washington newspaper. It talked about Tattoo the Basset Hound. Uh, Tattoo didn't intend to go for a run this one certain evening, but when his owner caught the his leash in the car door and took off, Tattoo really didn't have a choice. Well, the motorcycle officer, Terry Filbert, noticed a passing vehicle with something uh, that was dragging behind it. And he, he commented this poor basset hound, uh, Tattoo, was really picking them up and putting them down as fast as he could. He said he chased the car to a stop and Tattoo was rescued, but not before the dog had reached a top speed of 25 miles per hour, uh, falling down and rolling over several times. You may kind of feel like that is, describes your life. It's just trying to keep up, trying to pick them up and put them down as fast as you can. Have you ever noticed that some of the burdens and problems that we face in life have a tendency to build one upon the other. There was a lady who was having tr trouble with a skunk that had gotten into her cellar. She called the police station, she asked for help, and they recommended that she take make a trail of breadcrumbs from the steps of the basement to the back of her yard and then wait for the skunk to follow it out. Well, the next day she called the police station again and said, I did what you told me to do. And now I have two skunks in my basement. It seems like that's the way things go, that our problems seem to get bigger and bigger, Bur burdens seem to get heavier and heavier. And today, what I want to talk about, and it's not a message just for the crisis we're facing right now, but it's a message that I believe is good for all times. You see, burdens are problems that have spun out of control to the point that they have become unmanageable. And many times we deal with them by avoiding them as long as possible, or sometimes when we're faced with burdens, we just simply run away as fast as we can. That great philosopher Charlie Brown once said, there's no problem so big that I can't run away from it. The problem is, is that we don't have to avoid the burdens of life. We don't have to run from them because Jesus tells us in Matthew 11, 28 through 30, how we can be released from our burdens. If you'd uh, read along uh, with me, come to me, Jesus says, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, there are several different points that I want to cover with you today. The first is this. 
Jesus calls out to those who have burdens. He made this statement at the beginning of this text that we're choosing today, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Now, listen, our, our burdens can take many forms. Now, I'm not asking for a show of hands. It wouldn't be any good if I did because I can't see you. And, and, but at least in your mind, raise your hand. How many of you are carrying burdens right now? Now, I would venture to say that there's the majority of those who are listening today that are struggling today in some way or another. And like I said, our burdens, our struggles can take many forms. First of all, there's the burden of guilt, of guilt. Now, there are some of you that have committed sins in the past, and we all fall into that category. The Bible tells us we're all of sin and come short of the glory of God. So we all sin, but there are some who not only experience God's forgiveness that is offered to them, but they also can't forgive themselves. And so maybe you're struggling with sin in some way right now. You're trying to conquer it, but it just seems like you can't. It seems like you can't, you keep returning back to that place and it's become an unbearable burden for you. The second thing, sometimes we are burdened by religious expectations. You know, we want to be a good Christian. We want to do the things that are right, but it seems like the standards are so high and it's so hard to be holy. You know, God told us, be holy for I am holy. The thing is that holy means to be set apart. It's hard to be set apart for God's service because we have so many other areas of life that call for our attention. And so maybe the standard of religious expectations has just become overwhelming and you feel like you can't hold out. The other thing is, is the burden of hectic schedules. Now, as I said, it seems like a lot of us have been forced to slow down today. And uh, so the burdens, the fretting and worrying over the problems we're facing today really doesn't accomplish very much, does it? And so, uh, but we have so many things to do when life is normal. At Sendaria Baptist Church, one of the things that we've tried to do is to streamline our church program to Sundays and Wednesdays only. The reason for that is that if we really believe in the family and we believe it's important for families to spend times together, then we contradict ourselves by developing something on Sundays, but then a Monday night study, then sometimes a Tuesday night outreach, a Wednesday night service. If you're not careful, you can find yourself doing things at church four or five times a week. It's no wonder people get burned out from church and oftentimes neglect their families. I would say a word to other ministers. Listen, preacher or education minister, music minister, whatever your role may be in ministry, if you're a failure at home, you're a failure in the ministry. So important for us to, uh, to bring up and to train along our own children to be the spiritual leader in our homes. And so sometimes hectic schedules can weigh us down. And I believe the church can even become a part of that burden if we're not careful. There's also the burden of failing relationships. I think one of the most difficult things that can ever happen to a person, and especially if you are relationship minded like I am, whenever you have someone that you've been very close to who has turned on you or just they got caught up and busy with other things and other people and suddenly a relationship that was so important to you goes by the wayside. And so a failing relationship can be a real burden sometimes that uh, losing that person that we can go to and talk with and share some of our innermost secrets. The thing is, is that Jesus calls out to us and he offers us help. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. And then he gives a promise. He said, if you will come to me, he said, I will give you rest. Uh, I will give you rest. And so the thing is, is 
uh, a lot of times we get caught up in um, not just the work of life, but also I believe Jesus is talking to the, the Jewish people during his day who were trying so hard and working so hard at their relationship with God. Uh, God had given the Ten Commandments to Moses, but as I understand it, there were over 600 man-made laws that had been given to the Jewish people, and they were just overwhelmed by the number of things that they had to do in order to have a relationship with God, or so they were told by the religious leaders of the day. Let me tell you, human effort will never get you into heaven. Human effort, your works, will never help you earn a right relationship with God. The Bible tells us that we are saved by grace, not by works, and that if we could be saved by our works, all we would do is brag about those works and talk about how good we really are. Instead, all you and I can do is brag about Jesus, our Savior, and how good he is to us. So life doesn't have to be unbearably difficult. Jesus wants to set you free from your burdens. Let me move on to the second point. If you are burdened, Jesus has something to offer to you today. And Jesus doesn't offer you a typical religious life. I don't like religion. I've heard many people when I engage them and telling them the good news, they say, I don't like organized religion. Well, I don't either. I, I loathe organized religion. Uh, Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship that Jesus Christ calls us to. He doesn't offer us a typical religious life. What he says is the life that he offers, and I've got about four things. You might want to jot these down because these are four things, four promises that he gives to us. He says, I will give you rest. Now, the word rest and the word, uh, the Greek word means an intermission or a vacation. Uh, I remember when I was a teenager and I was on a, uh, I was dating and I would take a, a girl to the movies and and uh, there are two movies that stand out in my mind especially there was the the movie uh, the sand pebbles with steve mcqueen and then the movie and i don't know it must have been the date wanted to go to this hello dolly with barbara streisand you know those movies ran as much as three hours and whenever you're eating popcorn and you're drinking a large soda, uh, sometimes uh, nature calls and, and you need to get up and leave for a little bit, but you're afraid to, to, uh, to lose your place in the movie. Well, I recall in the sand pebbles first, I'm enjoying the movie, but I need to leave for a little bit. And all of a sudden, the film stops, the screen goes black, and they put the word across the middle of the screen, intermission, and the curtains closed and the lights came up. And so I, I thought, what a great concept. And they did the same thing in the movie, Hello, Dolly. We don't do that so much today. I'm glad that we've got uh, devices that uh, tell us uh, the best time to take bathroom breaks during movies. But the thing is, Jesus says in this text, where I will give you rest. I'll give you an intermission. I will give you a vacation even. I know a lot of mothers are telling me, boy, the kids are driving me crazy. And here it's for many of them, they've gotten an early summer start already. And the, the parents are, are pulling their hair out in frustration. The thing is, Jesus is saying, I will give you a break. Uh, and I will give you a break, especially from the struggles in life. He's, uh, there's a term that I like, it's called a second wind. Whenever I was in junior high, uh, Coach Slayton, Travis Slayton, uh, my basketball coach, used to tell us guys, he said, we're going to run. And he said, after a, few, a couple of minutes, you're going to hit the wall and you're going to feel like you can't even breathe. But let me tell you, you'll get your second wind and then you'll be fine. Now, I am just turned 70 years old and I think I've lost the second wind. 
Uh, I can run now and I just stay tired. I stay gasping for air. But the thing is, is what Jesus says in our day-to-day -day lives, he said, you want a second wind? I will give it to you. I will refresh your life. It'll be just like a vacation. Uh, and, and you can turn to me when you start going down a difficult path. In John 16, Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Those are great comforting words. You see, living for yourself, for possessions, for a better position in life, living for pleasure, all those things will only lead to burdens. Uh, I have always been a movie buff, and I found a couple of quotes by uh, actors that you and I would be familiar with, uh, and how they feel uh, about life and kind of chasing uh, the next goal. Nicholas Cage, who I don't believe is the greatest actor, but somehow you, you just can't help but watch some of his movies. He does get some good movie roles. But listen to what Nicholas Cage said. I wonder if there is a hole in the soul of my generation. We've inherited the American dream, but where do we take it? In other words, you reach for it, and once you grasp at it and you... Uh, you lay hold of it, then what do you do with it? Now, one of my favorite actors is Harrison Ford. This is an actor whose films uh, worldwide have grossed over $2 billion. That's billions with a B. He was being interviewed, and he said this, you only want what you ain't got. And the interviewer asked him, well, what ain't you got? His answer was one word, peace. You see, a person who does not pursue Jesus Christ, but rather pursues fame, fortune, all these different things that uh, call for our attention, cannot bring lasting peace to our lives. In Jesus Christ, we find perfect peace. The reason is, is because he takes care of, of life's biggest problem, and that's death. At the cross, he paid the full penalty for your sin and for mine. It's been paid. The word of the seven words that he cried out from the, the cross, the one word was to tell us die, and it means simply paid in full. I can rest if I face death in Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross for me because I know that my sins are already paid for. I know that, well, let me put it this way. At the cross of Christ, you exchange everything that you are for what Jesus Christ is. As I come to the cross, I give to him my sin. I give to him my burdens. I give to him my everything. And what do I receive in return? I receive his everything. He gives me his righteousness. He gives me his peace. He gives me his comfort. He gives me his joy. And those are all things that are lasting. Those are the things that are eternal. And so again, the, the relief that only Christ can bring, the world doesn't understand. The Bible calls it peace with God, and you can have it right now, today, by coming to God by faith. And so Jesus offers you rest, but also he said, I am gentle and humble uh, in heart. Um, what that means is that Jesus Christ is going to deal with you and me in a loving, tender way. There was a, on a college campus, a Christian college campus, there was a play that was being presented by some of the members of the student body, and they were kind of lampooning Christians on denominational campuses. And in the skit, this religious guy approached the center, and he said, Again, in this skit, you need to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and tyrant. Now, it got a big laugh from the audience, but 
the line could not be further from the truth. Jesus is nothing like that. He is not a tyrant. He is not cruel. He is not oppressive. He doesn't beat his followers down, but instead Jesus lifts his followers up. Listen to the way Isaiah described him in Isaiah 42, 3. He will not crush the weakest read or put out a flickering candle. So in other words, he's talking about dealing gently with those things that are, are temporary. Isaiah goes on to say, he will bring justice to all who have been wronged. You see, as I mentioned, Jesus deals with us tenderly. He goes on to say, and thirdly, my yoke is easy. Now a yoke is a farm tool that binds the ox to the plow. Uh, oxen did hard, demanding work, and it's used here as a metaphor for submission to a teacher. You see, in New Testament times, a person would choose a teacher, and they would approach that teacher and say that they wanted to be a follower of, of him. They wanted to learn from him, and that teacher would decide would actually choose the pupils that he wanted to sit under him. And so this is kind of the oxen that illustration that Jesus uses is a metaphor for that. Let me tell you, the work that Jesus calls us to do is possible only when Jesus pulls the load. Jesus promised his followers that carrying his yoke, in other words, doing his work, it's not grueling, it's not backbreaking. He makes it easy. You know, years ago, we don't hear the term quite so much, but it was called burnout. It was when a person had done a job or an activity to the point that they just burned out. They couldn't do it anymore. I heard many people say that in the church. Listen, if you are allowing Jesus Christ to pull the load, to, to you join him with that yoke, he does all the pulling. You and I simply follow. And Jesus tell, uh, said that the yoke also is well fitted to the need. In other words, Christ is not going to allow you to go through any difficulty without providing you with the strength required to go through that difficulty. And so the heavy burdens that you and I carry are unnecessary because Jesus says, I'll carry the load with you. Let me boil the yoke down into three things. It is, it is, first of all, it's connection. Jesus said, be with me. A yoke was made for two, not for one. And so Jesus comes alongside us and, and he carries the burden of the load. So first there is connection. Secondly, there is direction because Jesus said, follow me. If you're looking for a path to follow in life, Jesus has already laid out the path for you. You simply follow him. The two of you connected together by that yoke. I would encourage you today to follow Jesus. The third thing, again, we've got connection, we've got direction, but then we've also got, got cooperation. And that means to work with me. In other words, we are yoked together with Christ and we cooperate with him in the work that is being done. Years ago, I, well, I grew up in Oklahoma City. The pastor of the First Baptist Church of Oklahoma City when I was just a kid was Herschel Hobbs. He's written many great commentaries. Herschel Hobbs talked about the successful Christian. And he said, the successful Christian determines which direction God is moving and then moves with him. Folks, that's the picture of the yoke. And so before we come to him, we were living just for this side of eternity. We were only paying attention to this life. But folks, this life is a preparation for the life to come. And as we follow Christ now, while we live here upon this earth, we learn more and more about him until we get to heaven. And whenever we're there, we know him completely. And so again, it's following Christ, following him in obedience. And Jesus gives us another promise in, in this text. He says that my burden is light. 
Now, some people believe that if they give their life to Christ, it's going to just add a ton more burdens to their life. They're thinking, well, you know, I've already got my boss's demands. I've got the demands of my family. And the first thing you know, they're going to ask me to give up my Sundays and my Wednesday nights. And then they're going to ask for my Tuesdays and my Fridays. And before you know it, they've got my Mondays and my Saturdays. And, and it's just too much. I can't give my life to all those different de demands. And then plus... I'm already struggling to pay my bills. If I give my life to Christ, the next thing you know, I'm going to feel like I need to give my tithe, my 10% to the church, and I'm already having trouble making my bills. And I'm supposed to give that first, the Bible tells me. And so many people begin to count the cost and they say, it's just too much. I simply cannot do it. Jesus says, no. He says, my burden is light. And, and so, in other words, uh, it's doable. If we give our life to Christ, you can never outgive him. And he gives us so much, so much more in return. And so Jesus provides the strength. He provides everything we need to accomplish his work in our lives. Now, the third point is this, too. We can be released from our burdens. Uh, but it's, it's a three-step process, you might say. First of all, you must come to Jesus. Uh, come to me, as Jesus says in this text, is the open invitation Jesus sends to everybody. And, and I know that sounds like the obvious, but the problem is, is that you can't receive the help that Christ is offering until you turn to him. The word in, in, in the Bible is a word repent. It means turning away from an old way of living and turning to a new life in Jesus Christ. And so we, we come to him. We bring everything that we have, our sin, our guilt, our shame, our problems, our burdens. We bring all of it and we lay it at his feet at the cross and everything we give without reservation. He gives us back so much more in return, but it comes first by laying our cares and our concerns before him. Peter walked with Jesus. He was one of the uh, the top three, I guess you'd say, disciples. And so he knew Jesus, and he knew how to deal with Jesus. And he said in 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. David uh, wrote in Psalm 55, 2, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. And then all those things sum up what, what Jesus said. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And so we, first of all, we come to Jesus. The second thing is we yield to him. And so take my yoke upon you, he said. And um, uh Again, I, I'm not going to go over the, the oxen and the yoke again. I've already talked about that. But again, it is an illustration of the Christian life. When you walk with Jesus, he pulls the load so that you don't have to. Uh, and so yield to Jesus. Jesus is saying to you and me, and especially during those, these difficult times, Jesus is saying, let me do the hard work. Let me uh, pull us through all this mess. There's no question that some aspects of living the Christian life are tough. Being holy is, is difficult. The word holy mean, meaning set apart. It means that sometimes you might lose some friends. It means that sometimes you might lose out on some things that you once considered fun, but now you know are not pleasing to a holy God. Being faithful is a real challenge, and we can only do it when we have Christ's help, whenever we can turn to him for the strength that we need. I like the way Paul summed it up in Galatians 2.20. He said, I have been crucified with Christ, and I am no longer uh, alive. 
but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Listen, I can tell you, I, I, I know what this life offers and the life that Jesus offers is so much more. So, so much more. Christ wants to live through you. Imagine having the creator of the universe, the sustainer of all things, living, having residence in your heart. And my friend, Christ wants to live through you. He wants to give you his strength. He wants to give you his power, that resurrection power that brought him back to life. If you want to release your burdens, take his yoke upon you and let him, by his strength, he will carry you through. Jesus also said to learn from me. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Christians become discouraged when they forget that. I, I, I Write this down. I think this is something for us to look at each and every day. And that is living the Christian life is a learning process. I would love it if God zapped us the moment we came to him and just turned us into super Christian. That would be fantastic. It just doesn't happen that way. Christian growth does not happen instantly. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a process that we grow into. Now, let me tell you, I have, uh, some of you know me, some of you don't. Uh, I have three children. Two of them are in their 40s. Can't understand it. I'm not old enough to have 40-year-old children, but they tell me they're 40 years old now, two of them. One is still in her 30s. And I can tell you today that all three of my children are proficient in walking. Every one of them. But it was a process. We had to teach them. We had to guide them in that learning process to walk. There were a number of falls. There were a number of failures uh, along the way. Sometimes they fell on their bottom. Sometimes they fell on their hands. Sometimes they fell on, they fell on their nose. But they all learned to walk because we, as their parents, were more than eager to teach them how to walk. And the same thing for Jesus and our relationship with him. We walk with him. We fall down a lot of times, but he picks us up. He gives us renewed strength and we carry on and we learn to walk with him. Now, I've been in the ministry nearly 50 years now uh, and, and I'm a, I'm a golfer. I never thought I would have the golf bug, but I do. I love to play golf and I try to at least once a week. Oftentimes you're matched up with people you don't know. Sometimes I'm right up front with the people we're paired up with that we don't know and I'll tell them that I'm a pastor. It's especially fun, fun after they have um, uh, dropped some language that is inappropriate, but that happens a lot on the golf course. You hear men crying out to God all the time on the golf course. It's just not exactly in prayer. But many times, if I don't feel like I should tell them that I'm a preacher quite yet, I'll tell them, well, I'm in public relations, which I am. I'm trying to bring the public into a relationship with Jesus Christ. But more often, I will tell people I'm an educator. And that is a role that I like when it comes to being in the ministry. I am trying to tell people about Jesus Christ. I'm trying to help develop and train them as to how to walk after him. And the thing is, Jesus says, learn from me. Uh, because living life, and especially living the Christian life, is a learning process. And, and you know, the best news is, is the greatest teacher who ever lived is available to you. Jesus himself teaches us. Now, God calls some to be pastors and teachers, and he gives spiritual gifts to help and assist. But listen, it is God and his Holy Spirit at work in your heart 
that gives meaning to the Bible, helps us understand the truths more deeply. And so, so again, every step of the way, Jesus offers to carry our burdens, and as we sometimes fall, we get back up, and he strengthens us and helps us to carry on. And, uh, and Jesus bears our burdens for us. 1 Peter 2, 4, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, which is the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. Listen, Jesus has created you for more than what you're experiencing today. And so follow him. He encourages you to, as he said in his words, come to me. He says, take my yoke. I'll shoulder those burdens and those cares for you. And then most of all, he says, learn from me. I hope that you've learned something today. I hope that you've un understand that you don't have to go through this difficult time alone, but Jesus Christ will shoulder the burden with you. He'll give you the strength to carry on. Impossible times are possible when you've got Jesus Christ in the yoke with you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to bring God's word uh, to these online. Amazing the technology that you have brought uh, to our lives today that makes things happen that didn't happen years ago. And so we pray you will add your blessing to the teaching and preaching of your word. If there is someone that is listening this morning who has never before trusted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, I pray that they will pray a prayer similar, similar to this. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to forgive me for my sins. Thank you for paying the price for my sin upon the cross. Thank you for giving me eternal life. Help me to live each day for you. In Jesus' name I pray. And I pray, Lord, that if there's someone that prayed that prayer, that they will get in touch with us one way or another. Help us to be able to make some contact with them and show them that there is so much more to the Christian life. We thank you again for your goodness. Thank you for your constant care for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, we will be online again on Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m., and it's only about a 30-minute broadcast then, but I hope that you will join us for that little devotional time and that fellowship together. May God richly bless your lives in his name. Amen.